Hello everyone, I'm sorry it's been a long time since my last video and I appreciate all of you who have subscribed during my absence. I'm happy to announce that I've now launched a new wiki site at hotfortech.wikispaces.com. I'm now investing my energy into this wiki and will create new videos based on the guides from it. However, this does mean that not every guide will get a video, so please check the site out. In this video, we'll be using a DDWLT enabled router to remove advertisements from your surfing experience. Now what do I mean? Usually, when we go into a website, we get bombarded by ads. This includes YouTube, as we can see from both to the right of the movie and within it. Now, we're not going to be specifically targeting YouTube itself, however, it is a nice upshot of this procedure. Our ultimate goal is to get to the point where even Philip DeFranco is quote-unquote shocked and appalled by the lack of ads to the right of his video. We will set up the router to hold a list of unapproved domains. The domains are responsible for advertising content, so we won't miss them much. In addition, we'll set up a web server that returns one transparent pixel as the response for any request. As we surf, the router will consult the unapproved list. If the component requested is not in the list, it will retrieve it from the internet as usual. However, if the component is in the list, the router will automatically hand out the transparent pixel. The entire procedure is documented on my website in this wiki page. Let's go through the prerequisites. The first prerequisite is that you have a DDWLT enabled router and that you have installed DDWLT on it. If you need more information about this, go to ddwlt.com. The second prerequisite is that you have Telnet or SSH access to your router. The Telnet access is enabled by default, so you don't have to worry about that. The third prerequisite is that the client computer is using the router as its DNS and this is the default so you don't have to worry about it. The fourth prerequisite is that you have enough space left on your flash chip for JFFS mounting. If you're able to install the mini version of DDWLT on your router then you will have space for it. The fifth is just that you know how to use the Vi editor but by watching this movie you will get all the information you need to complete the procedure. So let's get started. As explained on my wiki site, we need to enable JFFS. What I have here is a WLT54GL router with DDWLT Mini that I have just restored to its factory defaults. Go into the administration tab and look for the JFFS section. We will enable JFFS and clean it because I'm assuming it's the first time you're doing this tutorial. Save your settings and reboot the router for it to take effect. By using the JFFS mount, we can reuse the setup even after a firmware upgrade without going through all of the steps in the wiki, although admittedly, there aren't a lot of them, just a lot of explanations. Now that we've enabled JFFS, let's turn it into our router. Enter the username and password, and we're in. The first action we need to perform is to create the directory that will hold our startup script. This directory has a special meaning for the DDWRT firmware, and by creating it we are actually ensuring that our startup script will be run automatically without our intervention in the web interface. The next step is to download the pixel server executable. We do this by simply copying the commands and pasting them into the interface. Next we'll make it executable by invoking the chmod command. And now we're ready to set up our personal block list. There are two ways to set up this block list. The first one is to put it in the web interface and the second one is to create it on the JFFS mount as a file. I prefer to put it in a file because that way it can survive firmware upgrades. So we will create the file by using the Vi editor, as explained in my wiki site, simply copy and paste the command. In the Vi editor you need to be in insert mode so you'll be able to paste in the list of domains. You do this by hitting escape and then I. As you can see you're now in insert mode. Simply copy the list from my site and paste it into the terminal. Once you've pasted in the list you need to save the file. You do this by hitting escape, 
semicolon and x. The file is now saved. In the next step, we will schedule the list of unapproved domains to be automatically refreshed by the router itself. What we will do is simply copy the command for my website into the corn job mechanism and save the configuration. Don't apply the configuration yet because we don't need the router to be restarted right now. Our next step will be to create the startup file itself. We do this by using the Vi Editor. Simply copy and paste the command for my website. Go into the Vi Editor. Go into Insert Mode by hitting Escape and I. And now that you're in Insert Mode, simply copy the content of the script into the Vi Editor. You can ignore the spaces created here. The script works just fine despite them. Again, to save the file, hit Escape, semicolon, and X. Enter. Now that we've created the file, we need to make it executable, and this will be done again by the chmod command. Simply copy and paste from my website. And now that it's executable, let's simply run the file. By running the file, we can see its operation. The first thing the script will do is wait for a little while to give the router time to finish its boot process. In the next phase, it will set up a new IP address on the router for the Pixel server. It will move the management web GUI from the default port of 8281 and create a redirect tool so we won't have to input this when we enter the router. Next, it will append the same rule to the firewall script. That way, if we make changes to the router, we won't lose connectivity to the management GUI. Then it will start the Pixel server with the new IP address we've set up for it. Then it will go to the internet to get the online lists. First, it will wait for 5 pings before trying to get the list from the web. This is because maybe your internet connection hasn't been set up yet. Next, it will get the lists. It will adjust them for our use because this list were not supposed to be used by the DDWRT router and not in this way, so we need to make some adjustments. Next, it will move them to the JFFS mount. And then once it sees that all the settings are in place, it will inject them into the DNS service and apply the change. The last thing the router does is bring the LED so we know that the process is finished. And that's it, you're done. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for watching. Please leave feedback so I know how I'm doing and see you next time.